Yo, what is up guys? Grim here, and today's video we're going to be doing a 1.1 banner breakdown video. Silver Wolf versus Luocha. Which banner seems to have more value and is worth your stellar jades as a free-to-play player or as a spender? We're going to go into the detail and we're going to talk about it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the announcement stream has just happened. The Chinese one was a little bit earlier than the English one. That's why it's in Chinese here, but we can see from my shoddy screenshots here that the Silver Wolf banner is up first. It will be the first banner playing in 1.1, and it has a total of four units on it, as expected. So we've got Silver Wolf herself here, the main attraction, but then she's accompanied by three four stars, all of which actually are available to everybody as a free-to-play player. So a very interesting set of units there. So if you are pulling on Silver Wolf's banner, you're pulling pretty much for her or some extra Eidolons on these characters. Now shortly after Silver Wolf comes out and she's seen her run, we will see Luocha following her up. Now Luocha's banner is a little bit more special as his four stars are actually a bit of an interesting lineup. We have the already free to play QQ, but she'll also have some value from Eidolons as well. Then we have Pella seeing a rerun so soon. And she will obviously be someone who is going to be pretty strong as well. We have seen her perform quite well already, but she's making a comeback and a second go of it. But then most importantly, the one I think everyone's going to be interested in, similar to the Jing banner, I think we're going to see it happen again, is going to be the Harmony Unit Yukong, who is the new four-star unit imaginary character coming out in 1.1. So both these banners will be playing in 1.1, Silver Wolf first and then Luocha. So which one of these sees the most value for free to play and and pay to play. Let's break it down. All right, first things first, comparing the two five stars and their value. Now, overall, if you guys want either of these characters for their theme or thematics, you should go ahead and pull them. It goes without saying, but if you're interested in their value, their utility, and boosting up your account to the best of your ability, let's dive into that. So Silver Wolf and Luocha have seen some pretty massive changes. And of course, we have a brand new unit, Yukong. All of their kits are pretty well known now. Thank Thanks to the announcement. So there's going to be individual videos on Silver Wolf, Luoch, and Yukong, how they fit into the meta and their worth coming up. If you want to see those, you should definitely subscribe to the channel as they will be coming out shortly after this video. But how do these guys measure up and how do their banners look? Well, let's break it down first and foremost for free to play players. So if you're a free to play player and you do not have a second healer or Japard, my advice personally from what I would do as a free to play player would be to pull for Luocha. And the reason reason for that is that we pretty much know the banners for 1.2 as well. They look like they're going to be Blade and Kafka, and as long as there's not a second four-star announced, which there may very well be, it looks like there's not going to be a four-star healer on that patch either. And the reason for that is they've already announced a four-star for that patch, and it is a physical night healer unit called Luca. So it looks like there's not going to be another healer, at least for the next 12 weeks, if you decide to skip out on Luocha. So that is definitely a pretty big deal, because that is a a lot of memory of chaos which you could potentially be missing out on and a lot of stellar jades which come with that so that's definitely something you guys are going to have to be weighing up whether or not you care about the memory of chaos but if you do having a second healer definitely seems like a pretty good idea and for free to play players if you don't have that yet i think luocha is definitely a reasonable option and a pretty strong front runner and that's without even considering his banner and accompaniments just yet in addition to that luocha does have quite a lot of utility in his kit he's a bit of an unusual healer but he does seem like he's going to be able to get the job done but he does also have a lot of manipulation tactics available to him and his kid as well being able to dispel allies and also rip off buffs from enemies it definitely looks like he's got a lot going on as well as being imaginary and having the potential to break as imaginary as well as a healer now silver wolf on the other hand here has been hyped as well as downplayed and then hyped again she's been all over the joint in terms of what people think of her now i've always been a bit of a silver wolf critic but that does not mean she's not going to be good. She's seen massive changes from when she was announced to where she is now, and it definitely seems like she's been completely reworked, to be completely honest with you. Now, it doesn't change the fact, though, that she can apply a vulnerability to a target, and that is very powerful. Now, it's going to be a unit, this one specifically, that you're going to have to see how she plays in reality to how good she is. I think there's a lot of theory crafting and kind of like discussion around how good she could be in certain teams, you know, how much she could enable and also 
sorts of stuff like that. But I've definitely talked quite a lot to some of the players who have done a lot of the content, both as free to play veterans, as well as big spenders. And the general consensus among a lot of people is that she will be very, very strong. She will have a very incredibly powerful niche, but do you need her? Absolutely not. There's not a necessity for Silver Wolf at this time. You can absolutely get 30 out of 30 stars without Silver Wolf. People are already doing it. And I can fully imagine that they're gonna to continue to do that without having Silver Wolf on their account. Now, could she enable some very cool gimmicks? Could she cheese a lot of bosses in the future? Could she be incredible in simulated universe? Absolutely. She could be all of those things. And if there's a new game mode, which has some super hard bosses that ever comes out, she could potentially be completely broken. But in the current end game we have, is she a must pull? Absolutely not. And for that reason, if you do not have a second healer, Luocha as a free to play player kind of wins out. Now there is a lot of cases to be made for Silver Wolf and her ability to enable specific DPSs and all sorts of stuff like that to be able to go against their vulnerabilities all the time and all sorts of stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's gonna really come down to how convenient she is. And can anyone tell you that at this stage? Not really. We don't really understand all of the way her abilities are gonna work, all the tricks, all the gimmicks, all the stuff which she's gonna have available to her. We don't understand it just yet. So I think that Silver Wolf is a massive risk factor. She's a big question mark. And until people actually start trying her, testing her and messing around with her, we're not really gonna know until the end of the moment. Now, the cool thing though is that you get all the information before having to make the decision. So if you wanted to know and you were curious about Silver Wolf and you wanted to pull for her potentially, well, you're gonna know if she's good or not before Luocha even rolls around. That's a pretty handy thing. And that means that you're not gonna really be in any losing situation. If it turns out Silver Wolf comes out, she's completely broken, she's completely game changing and everyone feels like she's busted, well, you can pull her. And if she turns out to be a bit of a flop and you were saving your Stellar Jade, you didn't pull on Jing and you were like, hmm, you know, okay, you can just go ahead and pull on Luocha as well. And that does make it a pretty much foolproof plan for pretty much any player, pay to play or free to play. Save your Jades, see if Silver World's any good. If she's completely garbage, then just save for Luocha, pull Luocha and you're on your merry way. Now let's dive into the four stars though, because these actually do impact things quite a lot with these banners. All right, first up on the chubby block is gonna be Silver Wolf's banner four stars. So first thing you're gonna be noticing here is most of these guys are familiar faces. You get all of them as a free to play player. Now, first and foremost, let's quickly go over their current performance, but you're just basically gonna be pulling for Eidolons. Right now in the current game, none of these units are seeing widespread play in the ultra end game. We're talking Memory of Chaos 6 plus. However, that doesn't mean they are bad. It just means that they need a little bit of oomph to kind of get over the line. Now the characters which I wanna draw your attention to first and foremost is going to be Asta. Asta is a character who gets substantially stronger with Eidolon. So if you were planning on pulling on Silver Wolf anyway, she is definitely someone you might wanna consider. Now the thing with Asta is though, that she gets really, really strong after she gets her fourth Eidolon and then her sixth Eidolon. Her first and second on Eidolon aren't bad, but they're definitely not her main selling point. So if you were just planning on pulling one copy of Silver Wolf, or you ended up going to Hard Pity, you might end up getting the fourth Eidolon of Asta, but it's not a guarantee. It's probably likely you get one or two, but you're not definitely gonna get four. So unless you get the fourth one, her value doesn't really skyrocket. In addition to that, she's also being released alongside Yu Kong, who is another Harmony unit who is directly competing with her in her niche. Now, she does get a lot stronger though, and I would say she probably rises up to a five-star Harmony character's level of power just by getting that fourth idol on, as it does drastically change what she is capable of. Now, you probably Probably want to go and watch an Asta guide for that and the info on that, but she definitely does get a lot stronger. Now, the two characters here are no slouches either with the Eidolons, but even with the Eidolons, I haven't seen Dan Hang pull off any big miracles in High Memory of Chaos just yet. He seems to be overshadowed by other five stars, but as a free to play player, that means that he. Might still be a pretty good option, definitely not a bad character. But the character I wanna really talk about here is Serval. Serval is definitely a character who gets way stronger with Eidolon, specifically Eidolon 1 and 2, which is very fortunate because those are gonna be the easily accessible ones. She does also get a pretty big power spike at Eidolon 6, but that is a pretty big far away point from Eidolon 1 and 2. So getting one or two Eidolons on Serval is definitely gonna boost her up substantially. And if you already had her leveled, it definitely would be a very nice bonus 
Baroness, especially if you don't have another lightning unit, which you already have, which is stronger than her, or have any plans to get in the future. So that definitely adds quite a lot of value there. Dan Hang's one and two Eidolons aren't bad, especially if you're already using him. They add a lot of damage and a lot of really nice quality of life to him overall. So I definitely think Dan Hang's Eidolons are nice and two. Tealio, Serval, Eidolon one and two, and Dan Hang, Eidolon one and two, very strong. And if you go whole hog or get lucky, Astar at Eidolon four plus becomes a completely different unit and very powerful. Overall, it definitely does make Silver Wolf's banner enticing, but definitely nothing crazy. All right, on to Luocha's banner here. And elephant in the room, we see Yukong. Yukong, a brand new imaginary harmony unit, which we will be covering a little bit more on the channel in an upcoming video. Now, she of course is a new unit, but we've heard it fresh off the press and a lot of people are reporting that we will be getting a free copy of her in patch 1.2. Now, of course, if you want her straight away, this is a really easy way to get her and a fast way to get her. But just know that she does seem to be a free to play freebie coming down the line in 1.2, but you'll have to wait. So she is a similar situation here and the overall banner is a similar situation to the banner earlier. We've got a lot of familiar faces here. We've got QQ here who everyone gets for free. We got Yukong who's coming in 1.2 for free. And then Pella is a character who isn't necessarily free, but a lot of people I imagine did pull on Sele's banner, which you know features Pella as well. So I would be pretty surprised if most people didn't at least have one copy of Pella right now. Now let's get into the Eidolon situation though, because that's really what it's gonna come down to. It's gonna be okay, if you want an early Yukong, you can pull on this banner, but largely it's gonna come down to Eidolons. Now, first and foremost, how are these characters used in the end game right now? Well, Yukong is new, but she looks like she's gonna be pretty good. The other two characters, how are they currently being used? So QQ is actually a character who is seen as probably the strongest character in the game if she has Eidolons, which we'll get into. But you know, at Eidolon Zero, she's definitely seen use by free to play players because Quantum is such a powerful type. But as pay to play players, unless they have Eidolons of her, she is definitely a little bit underwhelming, especially when measured up against Sally. So she doesn't see that much play. But with Eidolons, it's a completely different story, which we'll get into. Now, Pella, on the other hand, definitely sees quite a lot of play across the board, even by free to play players, as well as pay to play players because she has a lot of utility at her disposal. She's got a D-Spell, which will only see even more value in 1.1, in my opinion. She's got an AoE Ice Break on her ultimate, which is very, very handy because there is no free-to-play Ice DPS. And even as a pay-to-play player, Yang Ching needs Japard really to function effectively and at his full power. So a lot of people are opting to bring Pella for Ice Coverage, which is very good. And she also does bring some pretty nice damage to the table with her ultimate doing Defense Shred. So she is definitely a unit which is very popular. Now, unfortunately for Pella, her Eidolons are a little bit underwhelming. Now, let's talk about this banner though. Okay, so on to the Eidolon discussion. So Yukong, we don't know her Eidolons. They could be broken. They could be garbage. We have no idea. So she's excluded from the discussion for now, but she will be a nice bonus and she does look very strong and she is also imaginary, which is very enticing. We'll get into her when we have her own video. Let's talk about these two here then. Okay, QQ. Now, QQ's Eidolon 1 and 2 are kind of not that great. You know, okay, Eidolon 2, there's a little bit of power there, but QQ Q really starts to get good at Eidolon 4. And she gets even better, like a complete, she's basically a different unit at Eidolon 6. And she is arguably one of the best units at Eidolon 6 if you get lucky. Now, the thing with getting lucky in Star Rail is that you can force your luck, as you can just keep resetting, keep retrying, and keep playing until you get lucky. And that is absolutely what people do with QQ. The most powerful and the most effective runs which we've seen in Endgame right now with the lowest cycles have been featuring this character. Now, obviously those players had E6, they had, you know, crazy light cones and all sorts of stuff like that. But it's fair to say this unit is good if you have her Eidolons, which can be very enticing and she she is a very strong DPS if you get those Eidolons. Now, of course, the power spikes are at Eidolon 4 and 6, which we discussed earlier is not likely going to happen unless you're very lucky or have existing Eidolons of this character already, unless you're pulling a hard pity Luocha or multiple Luochas, and that's going to be down to you guys and your discretion on the banner. Now, overall, she is so good, which you could consider that, but she is in direct competition with Sele right now, and if you already had Sele and you like 
like Sela, I don't think that it's necessarily a must pull or anything like that. But she is a very good DPS with Eidolon, so that's definitely there for you guys to consider. Now, Pella, on the other hand, unfortunately doesn't get too much from her Eidolons at all. Eidolon 1 and 2 are largely irrelevant. Her Eidolon 4 is definitely good situationally, but I don't think there's really a unit which utilizes it just yet outside of Yang Qing. And Yang Qing, we've talked about earlier, is pretty specific in the way he needs to be constructed, even though he is good. But, you know, overall, I don't think her Eidolons are that impactful. She starts getting real power from her Eidolons at Eidolon 5, which is, you know, that's definitely, you know, in the outside of the realms of likelihood possibility, unless you already have Eidolons and you're pulling multiple copies of Luocha. So overall, while there does seem to be a lot of value on Luocha's banner, it does seem to be a little feast or famine. If you go for QQ and you want those Eidolons on QQ, you want to pull for her, absolutely she is crazy. And you know, you can maybe get the Eidolons, the rest of the Eidolons in the future down the line. So there is kind of like dormant value in this banner. There is Yukong. She could have insane Eidolons. We don't know. But then there is Pella. So overall, I would say that there is value here, but the value isn't insane. I would probably say it's about on par with the value from Silver Wolf's banner, dependent on the value of Yukong's Eidolons. But QQ is obviously insane. You know, if you don't have a copy of Pella already, there's some value there. If you want to get Yukong early, there's also some value there. All right, so which banner takes it? Which one has the most value? you here well the thing that i want to point out here is that we pretty much have access to all the four stars on offer here five out of the six are pretty much guaranteed for free to play players now yu kong has allegedly been said she's going to be in 1.2 that seems to be all but confirmed now lots of people are saying it and it's on new sites so it's definitely looking like it's going to be that way so she is all but confirmed as well with well, the only character you're not getting free to play is pella and pella was on the sally banner and i imagine plenty of people pulled on the Sele banner for better or for worse and if they didn't get it from Sele they probably got her from the standard banner so I'd say a good amount of people have six out of six units coming their way or already on their account I mean you're not going to get any massive power spikes or big utility boosts you are purely pulling for Eidolons now the big break points for a lot of these characters unfortunately are at Eidolon 4 and Eidolon 6 specifically for QQ and Asta meaning that a lot of people you know while you could get them absolutely if you're lucky aren't guaranteed them even if you are pulling the rate up five star and whether or not you want to consider that is going to be up to you guys now the characters who do get power from eidolons one and two are definitely enticing and pretty cool but those characters are pretty much limited to dan hang as well as serval and potentially yu kong we don't know her kit just yet but unfortunately the characters who really want the eidolons and are defined by them don't get too much power from their eidolon ones and twos so it's definitely going to be a whole hog situation with Asta and QQ if you want to see them taken to their power level limit. So that is going to be down to you guys. So I think I would probably defer to the five-star assessment that I had earlier around Silver Wolf and Luocha. Free to play, don't have a second healer. Luocha, if you do have a second healer, wait and see the power level of the characters. If Silver Wolf ends up being broken, I think I'd probably go with her. And if she doesn't, she kind of is just a little bit, mm, I'd probably go ahead and check out Luocha. And if he ends up being broken, Okay, we're online. Get a few Eidolons on Yukong, get an early Yukong, maybe get an E6 QQ, get a powerful healer, and then, you know, okay, let's say Luocha turns out to be pretty mid as well. Well, you still got all your Stellar Jades, Blade and Calf coming down the line. Interested in those, you can check out my previous video, but it definitely looks like you can't really lose. So overall, I would just wait a day or two after each of the banners. You're going to have all the information, but it does look like Luocha is probably going to come out on top for the banner breakdown here, and he's the one that I personally would be recommending. Free to play players moving forward for patch 1.1 because even if you have two healers he looks like a character which is going to have insane utility just because of his AUED spell I don't imagine that's going to be something that's going away anytime soon and enemies are certainly going to keep buffing themselves so until next time hope you guys have enjoyed the video if you did and you want more content make sure to subscribe but if you like this one specifically make sure to check out a thumbs up it seriously helps me out until next time cheers